Hey everybody, Backpack Hack here coming at you with another trail tip and today I'm going to answer the question, how much water can one of these fuel canisters boil? I've set up this video a couple weeks ago to get uh, everything ready to go and I wanted to make sure that I had everything ready. Uh, the first thing I did was I take a bunch of water, put them in these ice cream containers and they've acclimated to my house. I have my thermostat set for 68 degrees and this one reads 67.8, 68 68.2, so yep, that's uh, room temperature. I've got three of them here on the table, I've got three more down here on the side, and if necessary, I've got two more out in the kitchen. I also went down to the local sporting goods store and bought four of these MSR uh, pro these uh, fuel canisters. Now it says on here the net weight is 110 grams, which there means there should be 110 grams of fuel in here. The net weight, or the gross weight, I should say, gross weight of everything, the canister and the, the uh, cap, is 211. I actually took my scale down to the store and made sure that I got four of them that were correct weight. I found some that were a few grams over, some that were one or two grams under. So I wanted to make sure I got ones that actually had the rated amount of fuel in there for this test. However, I'm only going to use one because I just randomly picked one. So what I'm going to do is take this room temperature water. Since I have two boil pots here, I'm going to put two cups of water into a boil pot, put it on the stove, light it, and bring it to a boil. And I'm actually going to check the temperature. I'm going to make sure that it's 212 degrees with the thermometer. I'm not going to look at it and say, yeah, that's boiling. I'm going to check the temperature. I'm going to use the IR thermometer as opposed to immersion one, which has to come up to temperature, and I'm sitting here losing heat with the lid off. This way I can simply take the, the gun, bam, shoot a temperature, and read it. So that's why I have the thermometer. By the time this comes to a boil, I'm going to take an identical pot, put two cups of water in it, and when this comes to a boil, I'm simply going to switch them out. I have a bucket down here that I'm going to pour the water in. I'm going to click, and then I'm going to put two cups of water back in this one, and then I'm going to constantly be rotating it. Now, I thought about doing a time-lapse video of me doing all this, but it's just going to be too bulky, and, you know, it's just... And the camera that I would use, the only camera I have that would do a time-lapse is my DSLR, and it would sit there and just take a picture every second. So that's not going to work. So with everything all set up, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. And you're just going to have to trust me that there's that much water being done. Um, I thought, of, like I say, I thought about doing a, a time lapse of me actually doing the whole process, but that is just going to be simply impractical. So here's the first two cups of water. Now I'm using two cups of water simply because two cups is probably the most you will ever boil at once for like a dehydrated meal, you know, a vacuum sealed meal. So I'm using two cups instead of, you know, one large uh, container trying to heat up a gallon. I don't think I'm going to get more than three gallons. So I've got three gallons here on the table. I've got another three gallons here on the floor. The stove I'm using is a Snow Peak Giga Power 2 with the automatic light. What I'm going to do is I'm going to simply light it. And away we go. So I'm going to do the first few of these while, while the camera's running. And then I'll shut the camera off until things start to get low. And like I say, I don't think I'm going to get much more than a couple gallons, but I might surprise myself. So, hopefully it won't get too messy. And we'll just see how it works out. Okay, that's 170 degrees. I thought I would turn the camera back on to show you actually how, what I'm doing here. I've had four uh, boils already, so I've got eight, eight cups already done, and I thought I would show you what I'm actually doing here. I changed to a uh, baster because dipping the water in here was getting a little bit problematic, plus all the water on the outside made it a little sloppy, so I took to using a baster. 
because I have a couple of minutes between each boil to 193. I had a couple of minutes in between, so I can take the time to do that. It's, it's not like I have anything else to do. So once this reaches 212 degrees, uh, 194, I'm going to swap these around and I need to get these ready to change. Two hundred and one. This one's all ready to go. I've got another two cups here in the in the measuring cup to go back into this one once it once it reaches uh, boil. Two hundred and four. It's almost there. It takes about two two and a half minutes for this to boil. So like I say, I just thought I'd throw the camera back on there to show you exactly how I'm doing this. I've done four, so I've got eight. This will be ten cups right here. And it has slowed down a little bit. Okay, two fourteen. That's all I'm doing to uh, swap them out. I'll pour that out, pour this back into here, have it ready to go for the next time, and now I'm just simply going to start slowly filling up this uh, next two cup boil. Oop, I forgot to uh, do my little clicky thing. So that's ten cups right there that it has managed to do. So. I'm just going to go ahead and keep doing this until I get towards the end and then I'll turn the camera back on and we'll wrap this video up. 177. Okay, I'm at boil number 10 right now. I've done 9 complete boils, so I've done 18 cups so far and the stove is starting to slow down a little bit. Uh, in fact, the, the top is starting to get very, very warm simply from the reflected heat, but it feels like Sounds like that's getting ready to boil, but 190. It is starting to sweat to where I can get an idea of how much is in there. I really can't tell, but I think it's about halfway. I can, I mean, the whole side is starting to frost up a little bit, except for the top because it's getting heat reflected off the pan. But it feels like it's down to about my fingernail right here. It just kind of feels that way. So this is boil number 10, 197. Um, I'm just going to keep going until it just doesn't have the horsepower to raise the temperature anymore. Well, the test is done. This died so fast that I was not able to get the camera turned back on before it actually died. I noticed it was really getting low, got up, turned the camera back on, and by the time I got back over here, it was done. So the results are 17 boils, two cup boils. So I was able to do 34 cups of water. It was getting to where it was taken, and I shut this off when it died, four minutes and 32 seconds. I was able to boil the first few boils at about two and a half minutes. So I'm going to guess if it still had fuel, it probably would take in about six, seven minutes for this to actually get that up to boil. But 17 is the answer. I'm going to go ahead and, and pour these out because I don't need them anymore. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of variables in this that... Uh, are going to affect how much water you get out of a boil or how much boiled water you get out of a canister. You know, this is a controlled experiment because everything is air temperature, room temperature, 68 degree fuel to start with, 68 degree water, 68 degree air. Those are not going to be the same conditions you're going to have out there in the field. It might be colder, it might be warmer. The water you start with might be colder. That's going to take more fuel the efficiency of your stove is going to make a big difference as well. Whether you have a windscreen, whether there is wind, is going to make a big difference. I'm going to try to pull this off and do a float test of it to see where it actually ends up at. Yeah, it's floating up pretty high. But uh, your altitude is going to make a difference. Whether you have any wind, things like this, your stove is going to make a difference. How efficient your stove is. If you have a more efficient stove, 
obviously you're going to get more water out of it. If you have a less efficient stove, you're going to have less boiled water out of it. The other thing is, is maybe the temperature of the stove has a difference because I've heard that warmer uh, fuel is more efficient. So I might be able to get more boiled water out of it if I did a two cup boil, turned everything off, let this come back up to air temperature, and then repeat the process instead of just running the stove constantly. So there's a lot of variables, but hopefully this gives you an idea of under controlled circumstances what you can expect, and that is 34 cups under controlled ideal circumstances. So this is Backpack Hat coming in with this trail tip. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment on my videos. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Be sure to hit that bell button so you get notifications when I'm having a new video come out. This is my results. 34 cups per 110 grams of fuel. Be safe out there, and I'll see you out there on the trail.